Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I got this hair and makeup look. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The hair that I'm gonna be working with today is from Arabella Hair Company. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna be using their Loose Wave hair texture in 14 inches. I used two bundles of 14 inches, one bundle of 12 inches, and one 12 inch frontal to create this wig. Along with the hair, they also sent some super cute accessories like this little makeup bag. We've got some wig caps, a headband, as well as an edge brush, some little bobbins, pins, a pair of tweezers, and an extra hair clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my hair first before I get into the makeup. So before I install this wig, I am gonna be doing the bald cap method. So I already have my little wig cap on and everything. I cut little holes by my ears just to make sure everything lies nice and flat. And to secure that, I'm gonna be using the Got To Be Free spray. The important thing about this step is you just wanna make sure that this hair spray is completely dry. So I went ahead and applied it all throughout the edges and I'm gonna use my blow dryer to dry all the way down on a cool setting. That way I don't have to like irritate my skin. I found that this step can really make or break your install, so you definitely want to make sure that your hairspray or whatever that you're using to secure your wig cap down is completely, completely dry before you move on to installing your wig. So my hairspray is dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting away all the excess wig cap. I'm using a little miniature pair of scissors and I'm pretty much just following the direction of my natural hairline, except for like the widow's peak part. That part, like the top of my forehead, I kind of like to keep that lower. That's a personal preference. You definitely don't have to do that. But as I'm cutting, I'm also kind of pulling at the edge of the wig cap just to kind of bring it a little bit closer to my natural hairline, but not too much. You don't wanna like cut away any of your baby hairs or anything like that. So just be careful about that part. So now we're gonna go in with some cream foundation. I'm using one from Ruby Kisses. This is their 3D Face Creator Foundation and I believe I'm in the shade number nine. I'm gonna add a generous amount of that onto the edges using a dense foundation brush so that way everything blends in a lot more seamlessly into my natural skin tone. Once I have that foundation applied, I'm gonna use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cotton pad and just rub away any excess product off of my skin so that way when I go in with my hairspray, it's not like sticking to any excess oils or anything. Then going back in with my Got To Be Free spray, I'm gonna use that to secure my lace down. I'm gonna press the lace firmly against my skin as I'm spraying the hairspray, just to make sure that everything is staying put and the wig cap underneath isn't lifting as I'm drying the hairspray down. I'm also going back in with my blow dryer and the same thing as the bald cap method. I'm just gonna use that on a cool setting so that way I don't irritate the skin. And now that the hairspray is dry, I can start to cut away all the extra lace. And I'm gonna do that in a jagged motion using the same little scissors that I use to cut away my wig cap. For me, cutting it that way just kind of helps the lace blend into the skin a lot better and look more natural. I am gonna add some baby hairs to this look. You guys know how much I love baby hairs, but I am gonna be doing more of like a natural type of baby hair today, so nothing too crazy. I'm gonna pull a few strands of hair from the hairline forward using my little edge brush, and I'm gonna go in with my ISO Plus wrapping foam as well as a little bit of my Ebon 24 hour edge tamer, and I'm gonna do a couple of swoops here and there just to style the edges up a little bit more.
So next, I'm gonna start chopping away at this hair. <laughs> I am gonna be doing more of like a bob type of look, so I'm gonna be cutting a lot of this hair off. I kind of wanted it to be um, about like maybe like up to my chin a little bit. So I'm gonna cut the hair first at like shoulder length just to kind of see where I want it. And then I'll go like shorter and shorter from that length. And I did also use this little razor comb too to help me get like some nice layers as I was going. Um, I didn't want the hair to be like too blunt looking at the ends. I kind of wanted like some nice soft layers at the ends because I am gonna be curling this hair later on. And I kind of want the curls to fall in more of like a layer type of look, if that makes sense. Using that little razor there is just gonna help make sure that everything falls a little bit more like softer and it's not like too blunt looking at the ends. So this is pretty much what the cut looked like once I was done. Oh my gosh, I'm living for it, so cute. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start styling my sideburns next. I'm gonna use the Ebon 24 Hour Edge Tamer again and the Iso Plus Wrapping Foam. I'm pretty much just gonna push the hair outwards and then just create a nice little curl there. I'm gonna use a little bit of extra got to be free spray just to kind of secure it in place. I also noticed that the lace was lifting a little bit there, so I'm pretty much just like fixing that spot too. I did use my flat iron to curl this hair. I felt like using a curling wand would have just been like too, it would have been too much this because this is really short hair. So using my flat iron just is like a lot easier. So I'm gonna bump the ends a little bit first towards like the nape of the neck. And then from there, as the layers get longer, I'll start to curl the hair from the root all the way down to the end. I started curling the hair going like towards my face. And then as I got like higher and higher, like up to like the crown, then I started curling the hair away from my face. I also added a bang to this hair while I was cutting. So I am gonna be like styling the bang using my flat iron as well. I'm gonna curl that part of the hair forward and just kind of play around with it, you know, kind of see where I want like the bangs to go. But that's pretty much like what all I did for this hair. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to show you guys how I curled this hair. I am also gonna be adding a side part. So I went ahead and parted that away and then use my hot comb to kind of press the hair in the right direction so that way everything is nice and flat where I needed it to be and yeah that's pretty much all I did for the hair I'm gonna go ahead and finish curling and then show you guys what it looks like at the end and then we can go ahead and move on to the makeup So this is pretty much what the hair was looking like once I was done curling. I love the way that it came out. I did curl the hair a little bit tighter than I would like, but I was kind of anticipating that the hair would like fall a little bit, which it did, so that worked out really perfectly. But yeah, I love the way that the style came out. I did also go in with a little bit of extra, got to be free spray as well as some edge control just to kind of slick down that side a little bit. And I added some bobby pins behind my ears just to kind of keep it down. And yeah, I love the way that this hair came out. I think it's so cute. So now that we're done with the hair, let's go ahead and move into the makeup look. I'm first gonna start this look using some eyeshadow primer as well as concealer to prep the eyes for shadow. I'm using a mixture of the Morphe Fluidity Concealer in 3.55 on the outer portion of my eyelid. And then I'm gonna use the Be Perfect eyeshadow priming base on the inner portion of my eyelid. And that's pretty much like the mixture that I like to use to prep my eyes. I have no idea why, but it just works for me like that. I just feel like the concealer on the outer portion of the eye just kind of helps make that area blend in better to like my foundation and everything, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, but 
Anyways, <laughs> once the eyes are primed, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to shadow. I'm gonna start off using the Violet Voss Vibes palette. I really, really like this palette at the moment. It's just a palette of matte neutral colors. And this is definitely like a go-to for me for like more everyday type of looks. So I'm first gonna go in with that shade Booyah and start applying that onto the crease. And I'm using a Morphe M507, so that way I get some nice precision. And we are gonna be doing more of a winged cut crease today. So I'm gonna make sure to wing those ends out as well. I'm then gonna go into the shade Grody, which is more of a warm toned brown and using my Morphe M506, I'm gonna start applying that onto the edges of our crease color. Then next, you guys already know, I gotta use a little bit of my Fenty Beauty blotting powder. I'm gonna go ahead and set the brow bone area so that way when I apply my next shadow, it just applies a lot more seamlessly, the blend is flawless, and my brush isn't skipping as I'm applying my next shadow. So now I'm gonna go in with the shade Mall Rat. This is slightly lighter than our second transition color, so it's gonna create a really pretty gradient effect. So I'm going back in with a clean Morphe M506, and I'm gonna use that to just kind of buff out the edges of our second and shade. Now it is time to cut the crease. I haven't done a cut crease look in so long, so I was super excited to do this. I'm gonna be using that same Be Perfect eyeshadow priming base that I used to prep my eyes. So I'm using padding motions to apply this, and that way I get the most like straight, perfect line. I feel like when you do like more of like a dragging motion or you know, you try to cut the crease like all the way through in like one swipe, you don't get as sharp as a line. So for me, I like to just kind of tap the product in so that way I get like the cleanest, like sharpest line. Then once I have my cut crease look, I'm gonna add a little bit more of that eyeshadow priming base throughout the lid just to kind of prep that area for shadow as well. Then for the lid, I'm gonna go in with the shade Tubular, which is that off-white, and very gently, I'm gonna start packing that onto the lid. When it comes to matte eyeshadows, I feel like it's super easy for it to get like really patchy really quickly when you go like too heavy with it. So I like to just go in a little bit out of a time and kind of build the color up. Then next, I'm gonna add my winged liner. I'm gonna be using a gel liner from Melt Cosmetics. This is hands down my favorite gel liner at the moment. The formula is so perfect. It's really smooth. It doesn't like bunch up or anything and it doesn't dry too fast. So you have plenty of time to kind of create those perfect sharp lines. But yeah, this is gonna create a nice winged liner and I'm basically just gonna match the shape up with the cut crease. So now we're gonna go ahead and start creating like our graphic liner with that blue. And I'm gonna be using a mixture of pigments as well as a mixing medium from JD Glow Cosmetics. The pigments that I'm using are from Peaches Makeup. I'm using a mixture of a mermaids and double denim. And pretty much what I did was I added a little bit of the pigment onto the cap. I added a few drops of that mixing medium and mixed it all together with an end of a brush. And then from there, I just went ahead and start creating that graphic liner. And that mixing medium basically turns like any type of like loose pigment or shadow into like a liner formula. I love using this mixing medium because you can literally use it with any type of pigment and it dries down matte, which is perfect for these types of looks. So there's no like transferring. So we are all done with our liner. It's looking good, snatched, they ain't ready, sis, they ain't ready. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Melt Cosmetics liquid liner and just kind of fix up my wing just to make sure everything is super perfect and there's no like little bumps or anything like that. Everything is nice and clean. I am then gonna add a couple of coats of mascara. I'm using one from Ofer Cosmetics. This is their volumizing mascara. And yeah, this is just gonna help prep for my false lashes that I'm gonna apply next. And the lashes that I'm using are from the Hood Supply. I'm gonna be using two pairs today. That's right, your girl is stacking some lashes today, guys. We are gonna be using the styles La Cienica and Bixby. You definitely don't have to do this. You can use like a normal pair of lashes. I just wanted to be extra today and I couldn't choose between which lash I wanted to wear. So I was like, who cares? We're just gonna wear both because why not? So yeah, <laughs> I went ahead and stacked the lashes off camera before I applied them. And then I'm just gonna pop those babies on using a lash applicator and then I'm gonna move on to skin. I'm gonna prep the skin first using the matte cucumber primer from Ofer Cosmetics. I'm gonna add that to my t-zone area because that's typically where I get the most oily. So the nose, the forehead, a little bit on the cheeks as well as the chin and around the mouth. Then once my skin is prepped, I'm gonna go in with some foundation. I'm using a mixture of two different foundations today. I use the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in number 370. And then I also use the Laura Mercier Lumiere Foundation. The Laura Mercier one is obviously too dark for me. So I added two pumps of the Fenty one and like a little bit of the Laura Mercier one to kind of balance everything out. And I really like the way that this combination came out. I think the finish was just really beautiful. I'm just gonna do a thin layer of that using a brush and then just go over everything using my Japanese sponge just to get a really smooth, flawless finish. Then next, I'm gonna do a little bit of color correcting using the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Peach. This is their peach corrector. And I'm gonna add that to the under eyes as well as any areas that I feel like are a little bit like dark or kind of pulling like more gray. So the under eyes as well as the sides of the mouth. And again, I'm just gonna apply that using a brush and then just go over it using my sponge just to make sure everything is blending in really, really well. Then to highlight the face, I'm gonna use the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer, and I'm gonna add this onto all the areas that I want to bring forward. So the under eyes again, I'm gonna add some onto the sides of my mouth and kind of pull that like outwards, so like going towards my ears. And I'm also gonna add some concealer onto the cupid's bow and a little bit on the chin. And just like before, I'm blending everything out with the brush and then going over it again using my sponge. We're then gonna wanna set that concealer using some powder. So I'm using a mixture of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Setting Powder and Banana, as well as the Black Opal Soft Velvet Powder. And this one I think is in number 200, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm using a mixture of those two and using a really, really fluffy brush. I'm just gonna gently set the areas that I applied my concealer. So again, my um, under eyes along the mouth and the cupid's bow, as well as the forehead and the nose. And then to set the rest of the face, I'm gonna use some pressed powder. The one that I'm using is from Urban Decay. This is their Stay Naked The Fix Pressed Powder Foundation in the shade 70 WY. I 
then of course we have to add some bronzer so I'm using a mixture of two different bronzers from Anastasia these are in the shades mahogany and cappuccino and I'm pretty much just gonna hit all the areas that I want to add some extra warmth some extra depth so the forehead of course the cheekbones and a little bit on the nose I'm then gonna add some blush. I'm gonna be using the Scoops Elise blush palette from Beauty Bakery and Laura Mercier's blush fusion in the shade Rose. That orangey type of color from Beauty Bakery is gonna go more so like on the tops of the cheekbones. And then I'm gonna add that shade Rose, which is that pink. That's gonna go more so on the apples of the cheeks. Then to highlight the nose, I'm gonna go back in with that Scoops Elise palette and using the shade Beignet, I'm gonna add that to the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, and the sides. And now I'm moving back to the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and smoke out that lower lash line. So I'm gonna go in with the cake palette and this is from Glam Light. I'm gonna go in with the shade Birthday Cake, which is the darkest blue in the palette and start adding that onto the outer portion of the lower lash line. Then to blend that out, I'm gonna use the shade Icy Mint and using a Morphe M507, I'm just gonna go ahead and buff out those edges just to make sure everything is nice and soft. I definitely wanted to add some glitter to the lower lash line too, so I'm gonna be using a mixture of Glow Up Academy's glitters in Ice Me Out and Sky Blue. I'm gonna apply my NYX Glitter Primer first onto the lower lash line, and then using a really small detailing brush, I'm just gonna press those glitters on right after. And then I've been really loving an off-white waterline, so I'm gonna be using this retractable liner from LA Girl. I don't remember what the shade is called, but I'll make sure to put it down below in the description box for you guys. Then going back into that highlighter beignet from the Scoops Elise palette by Beauty Bakery, I'm gonna pop that onto the inner corners to keep the eyes nice and bright. And then finally, to finish up the eyes, I'm gonna add some mascara to the lower lashes. I'm gonna be using a new mascara from Lily Lashes. I definitely wanna use this again on like my top lashes and maybe with the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Primer because I'm really, really loving the brush on this one. But yeah, I'm just gonna add that to my lower lashes and that's pretty much it for the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows next. Per usual, I'm gonna be doing more of like a fluffier, like natural brow. And I'm gonna be using the LA Girl Brow Pomade in soft black. So I'm pretty much just creating some faux brow hairs using my brush. I'm just gonna use that to fill in any sparser areas just so the brow looks more even. Then to set the brow hairs in place, I'm using Maybelline's Brow Drama Brow Mascara in the shade Deep Brown. Then 
finally, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my lips. So I'm gonna line them first using the Melt Cosmetics All Day Every Day Lip Liner in the shade Edible. This is a really beautiful like dark brown and it works really well for a lot of like neutral lip looks and you guys know I love a nude lip. I'm gonna go ahead and line the lips first with that and just make sure to add some liner onto the outer edges of my lips just to make sure that that liquid lipstick that I applied next blends in a lot easier into the liner. And for my lipstick today, I'm using a mixture of two different shades from Ofra Cosmetics. These are in the shades Dubai and I think Bel Air. I'm gonna apply those onto the lips using the applicator and then just blend everything in using a brush. And of course, you guys know me, I had to add a gloss. I actually used two different glosses this time. I went in with the Sugar Pill Lip Gloss in the shade Bloom. This lip gloss is so cute. It kind of has like this sheer purple base, but it has like these really pretty blue reflex in it. I didn't want like so much of a blue lip though, so I ended up adding another lip gloss on top of it from Ofra Cosmetics, and this one is in the shade BRB. And that pretty much completes this look, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this hair and makeup tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Also, don't forget to click that little bell if you want to get a notification anytime that I upload. And yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. I love you and hopefully I will see you in the next one.